welcome everyone. So it's late, you're probably a little bit tired. And now you stick with the German speaking in English about something with OKRs or something like key results, Jira, etc. So I try to be an as engaging and entertaining as possible, but I'm not the joke teller, sadly. Um, we have other people in team for doing this. This is good. Um, so who of you have ever heard about OKRs? That's good. Uh, let's do this um, disclaimer thing and then continue in this topic. So apparently OKRs exist even since the 17th, so it's older than me. And it's good that you have all heard about this because let's start with dreaming. Let's imagine that within your company, organization, you have clear objectives, transparent, communicated, and you can also report on them on an automatic way. Would be awesome, right? That's something we want to talk, or I want to talk about today and show you that we can actually reach this because I myself uh, have a development or developer background and they tend to be lazy. And if a manager comes to me and say, hey, you need to do a report every week, every month, every year, and type in manually data, I probably would write some code to make this happen for me. That's my laziness here. So what I'm talking about today is actually four topics. So beginning about OKRs, what they are, how do you define them, why they're valuable, why you should use them, um, maybe why they're not that good. And then we go to the second part, how can we implement OKRs with JIRA and why is it usually sometimes a little bit of pain. And afterwards I speak a little bit how you should do it and when do you start using uh, the method I figured out with some clients together. So let's start with the boring stuff. So OKRs means key results and, uh, sorry, objectives and key results. So it's pretty simple. As I said, it's coming from the 70s. I think Intel was very famous with using them or developing this framework. And Google is also very famous, known as company using them. The thing here is it's a framework. So it's something you can apply to structure or to display or to monitor your objectives within your company. So what I see most is that um, companies often don't have any vision structures or goals defined. This framework helps company to align within the company and to align the people, align the team to achieve the actual goals. And it's not about measuring people, the performance of the people, it's more to guide the people to achieve what really is necessary for the business and for the future of the uh, company. So speaking about alignment, what is happening or how should it be done is that you have a purpose or a vision within your organization. Based on that, on organization level, um, you can define objectives on the company level and drill them all the way down to your team or individual people. And basically, um, all the OKRs, so all the objectives should align to the purpose and vision in the best case. So there should not um, OKR on the individual or team level, which is not attached to the company level OKR, or to uh, the vision. So what should you do in the best case with um, OKRs? The best way or how it should be done is that every objective, every key result is public. And public means that everyone within the company can see them and uh, uh, yeah, see the results, see what is defined and what should be achieved. Um, also, you should not spend too much time in defining them. So there is a slight degree between having 
good OKRs, so good enough uh, objectives for the next month, for the next quarter, and having a lot of meetings defining OKRs, which you probably will never achieve or are not important. So you need to find uh, the right degree of defining in uh, just as much and not too much. Also, what's very helpful and should be executed is that you do uh, weekly or monthly check-ins. So we have seen before there is this objective and there is a key result. For example, <coughs> increasing the NPS score from 50 to 100. So with the check-ins, you can constantly measure if you reach the goal or not. The good thing is it's not about, hey, um, we need always to check in the better uh, result. It can also be a bad result, but this helps you and all the other people in your organization to improve yourself because you see, oh, ob uh, obviously there's something wrong. We should make something different to improve this. The next thing is it should be measurable. So if you have an objective which is not measurable, how can you then measure, it's simple, the, um, um, the success of your goal? Is it just a vision maybe? Then we need to redefine the objective to be more clearer. Also, we should make sure, as I said before, that we define goals which are long-lasting or have a longer time uh, frame that you're not defining something. Tomorrow I will do a break and next break I do the break again. The best way is really to have OKRs which are long lasting, which you can measure and prove and do definitions to how to get better in your daily work with them. And last but not least, it's very important um, that you don't measure performance of individual people um, based on the OKRs, because it's not a framework to measure or to improve people. It's a framework to guide your uh, company to implement your vision and your objectives you want to, uh, to, do, um, to be done. So I have one simple example of an ex uh, objective. Apparently, Twitter is a thing, so that's why I added this here on the slide. See? Some jokes. Um, one objective is to create the best app in the market, uh, market to replace Twitter, because Twitter is not cool anymore. Um, now, how do you define the success of this objective? So obviously, you could start saying, yeah, I count the downloads. So if my app has 1,000 downloads, this is successful. But I think it's not really successful um, because what you really want to measure is how happy are your customers with this app. So they downloaded it, but are they using it? And are these users more happy with your app than with Twitter? So this is basically something um, as an example how you can define OKRs and the key, key results for this. So what is important for an OKR tool? So we have seen what are OKRs, how do you define them, what you should do or not do. So basically, first of all, we need to have all the necessary features, right? So we need uh, all the features to define OKRs, to define the key results, um, to be able to track them, to see a hierarchy, maybe reporting functionality, etc. I think more important is basically it should be easy to use because um, OKRs should be implemented on the whole company. I think most of you might be have some development background, so you're used to do hard things for some reasons, but other departments like marketing or business or sales don't like complicated stuff. So an easy to use tool would be actually very beneficial. Also, what is important is the scalability and automation. So how can you introduce it to your whole company and not only use it in some department with some team? So it should scale in the whole company and allow you some automations to really make your life easier. And last but not least, cost. 
So if the tool is too expensive, probably you have not a good adoption rate. Therefore, it should be as valuable and the uh, uh, cost should be in the same ra ratio of the value it delivers. So let's look how we can do OKRs with uh, Atlassian tools. So I googled and I typed in, hey, Atlassian, OKR. I found a very old blog post, I think it's five years old, stating, hey, you can use Jira and Confluence, it's easy. You spin up a page, write down your OKRs, use Jira to track your task, that's it. Um, I think this is not the best solution right now, there are better solutions. Um, but I can see where it comes from, right? So it's definitely possible, but if we think back about our requirements at the beginning, ease to use could be a little bit complicated, also the topic with scalability. So feature-wise, it has not everything you would expect. Ease to use, I don't think that your management usually would say Confluence and Jira together to do OKRs is easy to use. Scalability depends also because you need to re roll out it for the whole company, um, which might be cost uh, effective in some sort. But on the other side, existing users, existing developers are already having a license, so this saves you cost. So I go with the point cost is okay, um, for this solution. This is a better solution from my perspective. Uh, you have probably have seen this this morning. So Atlassian Atlas allows you to track and define OKRs, also to communicate your projects on an easy way like Twitter, back to my uh, app I want to invent. And um, the good thing here is that I can tell basically everyone in my company use this tool, it's already there, it's cloud, it's easy to use, it's not complicated, I don't need a training, etc. So I could use this and end basically the call here. The issue with just Atlas is that it might miss some features you want to have. So as I said before, I'm a lazy guy, so I have an easy to use tool. I can type in my OKRs, I can define my hierarchy. Um, but if I got asked to insert all the numbers every week, so to do the check-in, I don't want to do it. And this is basically where I have the issue with the people that they need to insert the data and therefore um, it might be not uh, adopted as much uh, as you want. So, as I said, feature-wise, it's not fully what I'm expecting or what my clients are expecting. It's easy to use. Scalability depends because it has limitations in um, the structure you can build up um, within OKRs within. But cost-wise, it's actually pretty uh, good and you can um, scale it easily within your company from the cost side. So then we have this magic tool called Jira Align. It has actually a very decent solution for OKRs. It looks appealing. It allows you to build uh, structures based on what you want. You can connect even your work items uh, to an OKR. You can add risks uh, to an OKR. You can uh, uh, do every possibility uh, or possible thing you want to do. Um, with Jira Align um, to really execute um, your OKR setup. The only disadvantage with this solution is Jira Align is not purpose built only to do Jira uh, to, to do OKRs. So you get a very sophisticated tool um, to do your scaled agile framework implementation and scaling your development, and you pay this part. Also, if you want to have um, um, the OKR tool, and if you just implement Jira Line for marketing, this might be a little bit expensive um, for them just to use Jira Line for OKRs. So, feature wise, it's fine, it's easy to use, it scales, but cost wise, it might be a little bit uh, expensive 
just for other uh, departments. And then we have our great marketplace. They are usually purpose-built for Jira or Confluence. Um, they can be very inexpensive. Um, existing tools within Atlassian, uh, Jira or Confluence know usually how they behave and can easily learn them. But not all of these tools are cloud-ready and it might impact your performance. So in this case, you have a bunch of different tools. Some help you really to implement OKRs. Some are very easy, some are scalable, some are cheap. But at the end, you still have a tool within a tool where you just find your developers, usually maybe the business team, but some departments still say, hey, um, I don't want to use Atlassian software at all. And this is basically the point what we see with most customers that they would say, or at least it's my opinion, I would like to see only Atlassian in other companies, right? It would make life very easy for me. But it's sadly not the case. But this morning, Atlassian uh, actually also mentioned that they want to be open, and this is something we can leverage later. So why are OKRs tools failing usually? They are usually isolated, as I mentioned. E uh, some of them are purpose-built, but are not connecting to Atlassian software. Some of them are just within Jira, very complicated to use. Some of them um, do not have any acceptance at all because they have different namings. Some of them don't uh, allow public OKRs, and some of them are not be able to connect strategic OKRs to team OKRs, etc. So, to really make here the difference, integrations and automations are key. And this is basically where I'm coming back from. So what if I told you that there is a solution to solve it all? In this case, I want to present you one dedicated OKR tool. And basically, with this tool, the good thing is it connects the system where the work is. So I can connect Confluence, I can connect Jira Line, I can connect Jira, Miro, Sapphire, whatever you like to see and to have in within your organization. And the good thing is I'm able to automate the key results and KPIs from all these different data sources where different departments might work in or want to work in or have their KPIs or data in. So as lazy person, I can um, just connect these um, connections or data sources to actually get to uh, my data I want to uh, report. So how does it look like? Demo time. So as you would expect, we see here a regular OKR tool, right? So we have on the left side our OKRs, uh, on the right side we have our key results, we see our scorings, uh, we see some nodes, uh, as you would expect an OKR tool to look like. We can also deep dive into one specific objective. It has obviously some information, uh, um, like the owner, who um, is the parent objective maybe, and more important, it has the progress um, which you see here. But if we deep dive into this topic in, uh, more, uh, um, in, in more detail, we can also see that this tool allows us to integrate um, external tools like Jira, Jira Align, and later also to do the reports based on our objectives and key results automatically uh, from these sources. So we can see here that the value was automatically uh, collected by the connection of um, Jira or Jira Align to really do my reportings on an easy way. And this helps me basically um, to make my life easier. And if the life is easier to do these things, the adoption rate of OKRs are much better. 
So obviously it has also dashboards, what you need to do. It has uh, different widgets which you can filter and adjust on your request. But the most important stuff is basically how can you connect um, the OKRs with Jira. So it has a built-in connector where you can then uh, define the different tables and information you have within Jira. And you can select, okay, I want to have this information on this OKR and as uh, soon as, for example, you can execute a JQL. So you could say, I want to measure my open bugs and I want to report the open bugs of my software to have an objective, I want to elim eliminate the open bugs on productive. So with this connection, you could write this basically with JQL and uh, directly get the information from Jira or from Jira Align, um, depending on where your data is living. We can also see here that we uh, can connect all these objectives to each other, that we have a dependency basically map, as we have seen at the first uh, slide, that we can all the way go down from the top um, um, OKR to the team or even uh, individual level here. So why was this now important? OKRs are actually very helpful. This is proven, so you can read a lot of success stories about OKRs. There are solutions how you can do OKRs within Jira or with Atlassian software. So my primarily tool would be Atlas for the beginning. If you do scaled agile frameworks, then you have maybe Jira Align in place, which is very cool. It might be that one of uh, your departments are, is, is using Jira with some add-ons, which is also very cool. And then you have the situation that there is the marketing team, which has their own OKR tool because they don't want to work with Jira or with Atlassian software, or the manager is not uh, very happy to use the tool at all. So with the solution I have shown you before, we can have one platform to connect all these different data sources, all these different departments using their tool as they want, and still we can use Jira, Jira Line, Confluence, or other tools to um, let the information where the work is done to be connected to your objectives and key results to automatically make your life easier with the report integration. Questions? Great idea. Yeah, thank you for um, presenting this. I would have um, like two questions. One question would be, um, um, speaking about objects in, in Jira, is um, this independent from the ob objects in Jira? So do I need to have, let's say, every OKR modeled as an epic in the background, like a lot of other, you know, add-ons are working yeah. where I want to create these kind of things? Or The good thing with the tool Quantif in this case, it has its own database okay. and you can connect it to basically different data sources. Okay. So you can um, connect or define, for example, JQL just for getting the um, reports, so the key results, but you can also connect it to uh, synchronize, for example, the objectives. But you don't need to recreate the whole structure, so own issue types or something like this. Um, you have, I don't have the screenshot with me, but within Jira Ticket, you have a link to the objectives, for example, or to the key result which is attached to it. Okay, cool. Um, one more question, if I may. Sure. Um, so, thinking about business goals, not only developer goals, so it's definitely useful to have OKRs rolled out across the whole company. So, now I'm thinking about cost saving goals. So having defined like in separate databases, uh, cost rate, sales rate, something like that, pulling those into the tool, is this something you also envision so that you are yeah, this can also measure against those goals? This is definitely a point where we see existing tools with an Atlassian platform failing a lot because usually, as you said, developers might have their goals and objectives within Jira. Mm -hmm. And then the CEO or CFO is saying, yeah, we want to have cost savings, we want to have more revenue, etc." And as admin, as I said, you wish to say, yeah, we can do this poorly with Atlassian. 
but w usually what is missing is this part of the integrations I have shown. So you can also connect it to your SAP system and get financial data into your key results. So and this is actually the, the, the um, uh, win of this tool, that you can connect the developers, the Jira and Atlassian lovers, and the business owners, which don't want to have anything to do with that and still stick in their 1980s SAP system. <laughs> yeah, so you can combine them both, and all of them are happy and cry, try to uh, create a sync as much as possible. OK, cool. Thank you. No more questions? I think there is one. Hi, it's Heiko speaking. Um, when is this data retrieved from Jira? Um, you can set it up so it's basically like a cron job, so you can define like every five minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour to execute certain synchronizations. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can, as in Jira, you can define automation, so you can define if something happened, like a certain goal is reached, that you want to create a ticket or want to add a comment, something like this. No, it's, it's different, sorry. Uh, currently, we are using Power BI. Yes. And it's always crashing Jira if it's, if it's used in busy hours or business hours. That's the reason why I'm asking. You can basically <laughs> uh, define when it uh, should be synchronized. For example, we could make the synchronization of the key results um, in the evening or in the night that this does not happen. But the disadvantage with this solution would be that your OKRs are at least 24 hours old. But yeah, you need to die basically one, one solution, right? Thank you. There was another question. Yeah, hi. Um, f first, thank you for the great presentation. Um, and uh, yeah, I expected to hear something about um, Jira roadmaps. Um, maybe I don't know everything about OKRs, but um, is, isn't uh, roadmaps uh, a tool would, 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 would be great for, for OKR tracking? Depends. <laughs> In German, you would say es kommt drauf an. Um, so I think this morning there was this presentation of product discovery, which could connect to your OKRs or to your goals, which, if I understood it correctly, are defined within Atlas. And basically, what I would expect to set up is that we have a synchronization of the goals from Quantive going to Atlas, for example, and from Atlas you can select them in product discovery. From product discovery you can add them to the um, roadmap and then you should actually get um, to this result. I know that within Jira Align you could basically do exactly defining objectives on a different, uh, or milestones to be set on a different uh, or specific time and display them in the roadmap. But I don't know out so right now if you can display on advanced roadmaps or on the roadmaps at all uh, something like objectives. Okay. Um, so second question maybe. Um, so you you showed the tool um, where all the data comes together. Uh, what's the name of this tool? Quantif. Quantif. Okay. Thank you. It used to be called GTM Hub, I think. Uh, hopefully, uh, said it right. Um, you can find it in the marketplace, or you can Google it directly. 